Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to our second training um, for World Migratory Bird Day hosted by Environment for the Americas. We are happy to have all of you here. I know everyone else probably trying to sign on. So uh, while everyone else signs on, um, feel free to um, say where you're from in the chat, your name, where you're from, maybe your favorite bird, migratory bird. Um, so for those of you who will um, need um, Spanish to English translation and probably English to Spanish as well, um, there is the trans interpretation bot button at the bottom of your screen and you can select, <clears throat> excuse me, either the English channel or the Spanish channel. I don't know if anyone wants to say it in Spanish. <laughs> um, okay, right. So claro today, que sí. go ahead, let's see. Sure. Thank you, Laura. Of course, hello everyone. Welcome to the second session for educators for the World Migratory Birthday. And like Laura Babulal well mentioned, we do have interpreting available to Spanish and to English. You can find the icon in the lower part of your screen where it says interpretation. You can choose the Spanish channel or the English channel, depending on the audio that you want to listen to. So you can switch back and forth. So in a few more moments, we are going to begin. We're going to allow one more minute for the people to continue joining. So we're going to give them some time. Hello, everyone from Pennsylvania, Mexico, Kansas, from Peru. Thank you so much for writing. Right. Thanks, Leticia. Um, so yeah, everyone, y'all continue um, writing in the chat. We're always happy to hear where y'all are from and who's listening in today. Um, so just a few uh, housekeeping, if you want to call it that, um, just ensure throughout the presentation you keep your microphone on mute so that you know, things can go smoothly and we're not interrupted too much. Um, also, our session is recorded and um, it will be posted on YouTube. So if you missed our first presentation, our first web um, World Migratory Bird Day training session, the first one, it's, um, it's up on YouTube and we will share the link to um, in the chat if you're interested, if you missed it. Um, yeah, so I would like to introduce the team as well. So we have Leticia. Um, she is the Central American World Migratory Bird Day Coordinator, and she will be presenting today along with me. So we will. This is. Um, she will be speaking in Spanish. I'll be speaking in English. So just ensure you select the channel of the preferred language. Um, we also have Miguel Mata. He is from Venezuela and um, he is a South American Crib World Migratory Bird Day Caribbean um, <laughs> South American coordinator. Um, there's also Daniela. Um, she is the World Migratory Bird Day coordinator for Mexico. Um, I saw Kat, Catherine. She just entered the um, chat. Um, the Zoom. Hi, Kat. <laughs> and she is um, also part of the World Migratory Bridge team and she coordinates for North America and Canada. And then myself, I am Laura Babulal. Um, I'm the World Migratory Bridge coordinator for the Caribbean. So um, I think most of us are signed in. So we'll go ahead and start um, our presentation.
Okay. All right. I hope everyone can see the screen. Um, all right. So to begin, um, for this year's World Migratory Bird Day 2022, our theme is light pollution and the slogan in English is dim the light to birds at night and um, we will be presenting on how to organize a world migratory birthday event. Um, we know sometimes it can be a little overwhelming or challenging to think about having to coordinate all of this logistics to bring people together to celebrate migratory birds but we're here to hopefully make that process smooth as possible. So feel free to ask us any questions along um, the presentation and you can um, just type them in the chat and we'll try to our best to keep track of your questions um, so we can answer them at the end. Um, at the end as well, if you wanna ask a question and you don't wanna type in the chat, you can also raise your hand and you can ask us using your microphone. Um, so yeah, so, World Migratory Bird Day, um, just for some of you who may be new to this, it's an annual awareness raising campaign highlighting the need for the conservation of migratory birds and their habitats. So just to give you a brief overview of what we'll be talking about today, so we will briefly speak about the phenomenon phenomenon of migratory bird of my of migrating um our celebration dates for world migratory bird day um how you can get the materials uh our digital materials and then about our mini grants it's important to, um, to share how you all can get our educational materials via the mini grant and then we'll get in depth on how to actually, you know, organize uh, your event. And we'll show you all some examples as well. And then we'll have questions at the end. So let's talk a little bit about bird migration and how, and how incredible bird migration is. So what is bird migration? You know, it is just a very common phenomenon in nature in which migrants, in this instance, birds travel very long distances. And it's incredible to think about how these um, birds, creatures, can fly such long distances, you know, from like the smallest warblers to like owls. And it's incredible to think how they can do this migration, this activity, um, it's really a phenomenon in nature. Uh, and it generally encompasses, you know, breeding and wintering and non-breeding, that sort of thing. So our focus is light pollution. So this affects, you know, birds at nighttime, since, you know, light pollution is something that happens more at night. Um, so but why do birds migrate before we jump into the light pollution issue? Um, one of the main reasons is for search for food. So it's, and their survival. So birds basically, you know, they will migrate depending on um, how abundant their resources. And if it gets more scarce, they'll move away and go to an area where there's more food. So, and also for breeding as well. Right, so some birds, they, you know, they migrate at night and it is important for us to dim the lights, right? For birds at night. So there are some advantages to birds flying or migrating at night. One is, you know, the atmosphere is a little more stable. So there's not like those daytime thermals. So they require less energy to, to fly because there's less of the, that time. Um, Day, daytime thermals in the atmosphere. Um, there's also cooler temperatures, so it's more comfortable for them to fly at nighttime. And then also, in at night, you know, they are not seen by these predators, so it's safer for them as well from predators. So lots of lots of advantages of these of birds migrating at night. So we have to keep the nights, you know, 
safe and reduce our light pollution. So every year we celebrate World Migratory Bird Day on the second Saturday of May and also in October. So for this year in 2022, it's on May 14th and May 8th, I mean October 8th, sorry. But however, these dates are not mandatory. You don't have to celebrate in these days. You can celebrate throughout the year, anytime you like, you can celebrate. We welcome all celebrations throughout the entire year. Um, so we have lots of digital materials that you can um, get from the website at the bottom there, yeah, trello.com. We can probably share it in the chat as well for everyone. And also email you all it. Um, so these, and then you can also get resources at environmentamericas.org. Uh, there are lots of digit, digital materials that you can get to help um, you plan your World Migratory Blue Day event. So feel free to go check out these um, online resources. Uh, and very important, we have these mini grants that we, every year we provide, we call them happy kits as well. Um, so we provide educational material. So in the kits, um, there's a little photo of what we normally have in the kits. And they're like posters, they're bookmarks, they're just bird masks that um, kids can decorate. Um, there's also the cutout birds, um, really fun. Kids do really um, creative things with them. Um, and, and of course, stickers. Everyone loves stickers and bracelets. Um, and yes, these mini grants are available to everyone in the Americas and the Caribbean. And you can apply for the mini grants at the website below, migratorybirthday.org slash mini grants. And we'll share this with you all, don't worry. So I'm just going to speak really briefly on the organizer guide, just let you all know what it is. Um, because we do have an upcoming um, webinar training specifically um, discussing and talking about the organizer guide in much more detail on how you could implement it into your World Migratory Bird Day celebrations. So the photo on the right is just the organizer guide from previous years, um, but we would have one ready for this year. Um, so basically what the organizer guide, it offers a series of activities and resources. It's available in both English and Spanish, and that's great. And um, you can use it with some of your educational materials that you know, we provide to you. So there, so there are lots of activities in there that are designed by Morelia and the World Migratory with their team. Um, so this year's activities will be specifically focused on light pollution. So um, um, it'll be really exciting for you all to see the activities that, um, that are planned for this year. So I would, I'll leave that as a little teaser for you all for the next uh, webinar. So please come to that one as well when we have it. To learn more about our organizer guide. All right, so now to get into the um, the core of today's presentation on how to organize your World Migratory Bird Day event. So I will pass you on to Leticia. And um, this uh, session, this part of the presentation will be in Spanish. So if you need Spanish to English translation, don't forget to click on the interpretation button and select the English channel. All right, thank you so much. And over to Leticia. Bueno, muchas gracias, Laura. Well, Laura, thank you very much for the information provided about today's theme, where to find materials, and also a brief explanation on bird migration and why we are focusing on the theme of light pollution, specifically for the night migration of some birds. 
the and they they use the stars as guides so in this moment i'm going to tell you a little bit more about how we can organize an event for the world migratory birthday next please next slide thank you so in order to organize an event for the world migratory birthday it is very important to follow these steps. So I'm going to show you six steps that you're going to be able to follow. This is just a guide. So you, with your experience, you can also incorporate other elements that you think can enrich your event. However, whenever we organize an activity, we always have a checklist of the things that we want to achieve with that activity. So I'm going to give you more information about these steps in the next slide. We're going to start with number one. Thank you. Step one is learn more about conservation. And in our case, we are already doing that. Participation from all of you in these trainings that we are providing through Environment for the Americas are very important for you to get to know what this theme is really about, which is light pollution. And the material available in Trello, in the Trello platform and in the website of Migratory Birds that we can share on the chat. You can also find information about this theme. And another option is just to look for information online, mainly information that is reliable in order to to have a better idea of what actions to take from our homes to be able to help nature, in this case, birds, so we have a lower impact in light pollution. Next slide, please. So step two, is to identify what, which is your target audience that we want to convey our message to. So identifying your audience is very important. Here we have three, three different groups. We have kids, youth, and adults. In each case, we are going to try to design activities that are aimed for them. So this is very important because this way we can also project the materials that we're going to use or forecast the materials that we're going to use and the methodology that we're going to use. So the message gets across and actually gets to the people that we want to get to. And something else that we can do is a, a celebration. We, we can have an inclusive celebration. That means that if we have the knowledge that there might be people that have some sort of hearing disability, for example, or if they are visually impaired, then we need to consider that the materials that we're going to use are going to be very important for them to be able to get the message that we want to communicate. In this case, the topic of the World Migratory Birthday. So we need to identify our target audience, and that is something very important that we need to do, which is the second step in order to have a successful event. Next slide, please. Once you have the information about the first step, once you know about the topic that you want to disseminate and also considering the people that we are going to be talking to, then now we can design the activity that we're going to implement. The, the table that you can see on the screen is just a guide that you can follow to start designing 
the activities that you want to have on the World Migratory Birthday is like when we have a workshop or a presentation, we develop a topic and we, we write this letter, educational letter, which asks you important questions that help you reflect. For example, what is the name of the activity that you're going to to have it can be i don't know seashore migratory birds or urban birds but always around the topic of migratory birds so also what is the goal or objective of my activity what do i want people to get to know that is something very important to consider to know your objective of the activity that you're going to have so what is my goal with this activity? What information do I want my audience to get? Here we have a couple examples. It, it can be to know about migratory birds that fly at night, the challenges that the birds face. Then we write a description of what we want to have. It can be a festival or it can be a workshop. It can be a talk. And in our case, we also combine activities. It can be online or face-to-face -face or hybrid. It can be also a webinar or we can go bird watching. And then we have our target audience that we already mentioned in the step before. Is it going to be for everyone? Is it for kids? Is it for youth? Is it for adults? As I mentioned before, consider if there are people with some sort of disability. You need to also consider that when thinking about the methodology to be able to talk or to discuss the theme. Also, how many people are you thinking uh, you're going to have participating in the activity. Are we talking about 10 people, 20, 40, or even more? And also we can include the needs. What do you need to be able to carry out this celebration? So do you need to make your material or do you need to print materials? Is the place where the activity is going to take place, is it accessible for everyone if everyone is going to participate, then is it open for people that need a wheelchair or is it accessible to elderly people? These are the type of questions that we need to ask ourselves when designing the activity that we want for the celebration. As I said, this is just a guide. I know that many of you already have experience in developing celebrations or events for the celebration or the migratory birthday. So each of you can carry out your activity as best as you think. Next, please. Then on step four and step five, like you can see, step four says determine your needs for the success of the event. And this is related to step five which says identify possible partners or interested people or people interested in joining. Here we have a couple of pictures where you can see uh, some kids bird watching. And in this case, this was an activity in which we had the participation of people in the school and they were able to provide the space. So they lend us a classroom with chairs so we could have the activity. And then the picture in the middle, we are collecting solid waste at a beach shore. And here we also needed some support on site. So we identified partners that could collaborate. And that way we can complement all the needs that at the time we, we had, for example, the plastic bags to be able to put the waste gloves also. And also the calling to the local people so they could participate and help us. And then the third photograph, what we want to show is that this year, the conservation theme is about light pollution. So maybe we can identify those groups that are interested in that topic. One example are 
Astronomers Association that maybe you can identify in your country or in your city. And there they might be interested in talking about light pollution as well. So that could be a group of people that are, might be interested in joining this celebration and also provide more information about it. For example, uh, support providing support like logistic in logistics or if you're going to do something online then you probably need a zoom or youtube platform we need if we need transportation then think of who you can partner up with to provide those type of support also professional support if we need support from a professional that knows or that specializes about birds or that knows about light pollution, then we could also invite them to, to celebrate. Next, please. Step six, when we already have our activity designed, then now we can register the event because we already have all the necessary information and here in the link that we're also going to share in the chat the link to be able to register your event of the world migratory birthday as soon as you register the event you're going to be able to see in the world map all of the places where activities to celebrate the world migratory birthday take place and that way you can let everybody know what's happening in your country. For example, what's happening in Nicaragua, El Salvador, Mexico regarding the World Migratory Birthday. And that way people can also participate in the activities that you are carrying out. So what are the requirements in order to consider it a World Migratory Birthday event. Something very important is to include the, the theme of the World Migratory Birthday of this year, 2022, and also to carry out educational activities. Here on the right, we have an example of the format that you can use. You can download this format from the link where you can find the resources for this year's theme. This is a format that we use to do the invitations or to the, to make the flyers for the celebrations. So Laura, if you click on it, we can start to see how the information appears. So this is just an example of an invitation to an activity. Here it says, we invite you to participate and to, in our talk, Birds and Stars, and it has the day, the time, and the place. And you can also include the logos and the spaces of those partners that are going to participate or that are going to support your festival, your workshops, or your activities in general. So this is just an example. When you register your event in the map, there is a space where it asks for a flyer of the event. So easily you are going to be able to use this format to be able to upload that flyer when you register your event. Next, please. And the last step is do your activity and enjoy. That is the most exciting part because this way you can develop the activities by enjoying with the children, with the youth, of everything that we know about birds. So they can put into practice these activities to diminish the dangers that birds have during their migration trips. So here you can see a couple of photos of children doing activities at their school and they do drawings or they do arts and crafts. For example, in Nicaragua, some groups have decided to to have a migratory bird as a mascot to, to bring people to their activities also you're going to see 
pictures that the kids can color and I'm going to tell you more, exam more examples in a little bit. Next, please. So these are a couple of examples of online activities. We know that COVID is still there and some people in some countries still have some restrictions. So they can't gather a big number of people. So easily you can decide to have uh, online activities instead and you can use um, platforms. Some of them are free and you can have different activities like contests, talks, online galleries, educational videos, or virtual parties, tutorials, or open dialogues. Here, it's an example of how an invitation for a Zoom event might look like to have an activity with kids. On the right, we have an example of an activity that took place last year. As you can see, the theme, or rather the name of the activity was climate change and migratory birds. And this was under the conservation theme, which was seeing fly and soar like a bird. Here is a format that we used for the World Migratory Bird Day of last year. And so this was an online, dialogue with children, so talking to children to save the world. And then the logos of those organizing parties. Next, please. Here we can also see an example of activities to do with children. You can have storytellers, you can have dancing contests, you can make a bird mask. Here in the photograph, we can see the girls wearing their mask, which is also part of the materials that we provide to educators. And also we have manuals, sorry, manuals to make arts and crafts, like creating a sticker for your window. And binoculars are always a success in activities with children because we have very small children that sometimes uh, can't hold their the binocular binoculars because they're too heavy, so they can make their own and they can practice how to use them through arts and crafts. Also, puppets, drawings, this drawing that you can see to the right, this was also inspired by a story about a migratory bird. So the kids drew what they found the most, um, what called their attention more, the most exciting part of the story. And here, uh, this is a bird uh, colliding against a window. So that was impressive for the children. You can also plant native plants. You can, play games that tell them examples of things they can do to help migratory birds. Here, creativity has no limits, so there are many, many other examples as well. Next, please. This is another example of an activity that we had in Nicaragua through our friends of Quetzalí. The theme of the topic was the festival of birds and coffee and always following the conservation topic of last year, which was seeing flies soar like a bird. And here we have the dates, the place and the people that provided support for this event. Something very important is to always include the logo of environment for the Americas because we are the ones promoting this festival, this World Migratory Birthday. And here to the right, we can see that they always use the bird, a specific bird to attract more audience. Next, please.
And here we have other examples for young people and adults. We can include conferences, educational talks, open dialogues, movie night. We can go bird watching. We can have contests, art contests or photography contests, or you can have a contest of poems or songs or for a station. You can do concerts. And also because the topic or the theme of this year is light pollution, you can include astronomical observation as an activity as well, because it's at night. Here we can see some of the photographs of the activities that took place last year. Some young people wrote songs about the theme of the World Migratory Birthday, also plays. And something that I wanted to mention is that something different happens every year. For example, in 2019, it, the theme was plastics. And so every year we have a different theme that help us know more about the challenges that the birds face. So this year you can include, for example, the plastic waste theme. Many educators always include a campaign of plastic collection in be in the beach or in wetlands because that's also part of the actions that we can do in order to diminish the challenges of migratory birds and always following a conversation message that we always repeat at the end of the activity. Next, please. And well, now Laura is going to speak more about some of the activities that have taken place in the Caribbean. Thank you, Leticia. Um, so I'll just briefly um, share some examples of activities that happened um, throughout the Caribbean over the last year or so. So um, there were some bird watching activities um, in the Dominican Republic and in Montserrat. So at the top left hand side uh, photo, you can see um, young kids learning how to use binoculars and how to watch, how to bird watch. Uh, it is really um, a really great activity to show young people and even adults um, birds in nature, if it's in a park, even in the middle of a city, um, people are amazed that, you know, when they look at the birds through binoculars and point out the beauty and the differences among all the different species, you know, it really brings um, a lot of um, attraction and enthusiasm for birds, right? So it's a really great activity. And also in Montserrat, lower right hand uh, photo, they chose to go to the beach and enjoy some bird watching at the beach. So that would um, include shore birds, which are also very uh, interesting birds. Um, another activity that um, can be done is also art. Art is such a great tool and such a great way to teach people, children, uh, teenagers, adults, whoever, um, about birds. So you can see in the lower left-hand photo um, in Cuba, we have uh, kids decorated the bird mask that we showed you all previously that comes in the educational materials. And that's a great way, you know, you teach them about birds and they can probably try to like um, create or draw on it, like um, a bird that they've seen outside, something like that. And then you can also see some children in their bird costumes that they created. And then another activity, um, this was for, this was in the Dominican Republic. Uh, I think, I believe it was for us, for a group of uh, teenagers, school students, students, 
and they took them to the museum and they learned about birds through that way. So it's not always restricted how you can uh, do these activities. You can be creative and um, try to come up with like different new ways, how to make things interesting and get people enthusiastic about migratory birds. Um, so, of course, we can't do all of this without saying thank you to all of these wonderful organizations that make World Migratory Bird Day possible every year. So thank you. We, um, you know, we always have to highlight them. So thank you so much. And this is our last slide. And we just want to share our contact information. So if you um, are interested in, in World Migratory Bird Day, please take down um, our email addresses here. So if you're from the United States and Canada, you can contact Catherine. Her email address is at the top. Then if you're in South America, you can contact Miguel. Um, Caribbean, you can contact myself, Laura. And um, for Central America, there's Leticia. And then if you're from Mexico, you can contact Daniela. So thank you so much. And also these are our social media um, handles. So you can um, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and please uh, tag us on all of these social media. Um, so to share your activities, um, please tag us. We love sharing and learning what you all are doing for World Migratory Great Day. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, I guess we will open up for questions now. Sí. Eh, por acá, Laura. Okay, so Laura, I'm going to read some of the questions that um, are here in the chat. I have Veronica Elias Vasquez who says, these meetings I found through a colleague at work, but how can I get the information directly to my email? And she gave us her email address. Thank you, Veronica. And actually in the slide that we're showing right now, we are showing the contact info of the coordinators per region. So if you're in Colima, Mexico, then you can get in touch with Daniela Sousa and you can see her email on the screen so she can send you all the information that you need. Also, we have Veronica as well. She says, I, I only can register my future activities, but I can't register my previous activities. She's mentioning that because she just registered a previous event and it doesn't seem to appear. You can check, you can register future activities and previous activities because that way we can keep track of all the activities that take place in the different regions. So we can also ask later. We can ask you later after the meeting uh, for the information of the activity you wanted to register and we can check what happened. So if anybody else has a question or a comment, you can write it in the chat or you can open your mic. Just please raise your hand beforehand. So let me see if there is a person that has a question or uh, that has a comment. All of the examples that we've given you of the activities, these are just guides that you can use as inspiration. This is just to show you what educators have done in other places. So you can do other activities. Uh, and so Chile is saying that on the slide, we can't see the email of Daniela on the screen. I don't know if we can make 
the presentation smaller so we can see the email of Daniela. Or I'm just going to write it in the chat. Oh, there it is. Okay, there it is. So you can find Daniela's email in the chat. And you can also see it now on the screen. And you can also find the emails of the other coordinators. Thank you, Laura. Okay, so I don't know if anybody else has a comment, question. Well, either way, the activities that you register in the map always take some time to to be uploaded and to be seen in the map. So it's going to take some time before the activity is approved. It always has to go through an approval process because we want to make sure that this is an educational activity that follows or that is about the theme of the World Migratory Birthday. Let's see, Veronica says, in my work, we want to do an event in May. Is it possible to request materials and are we going to get them on time? Regarding the materials, it is very important that we're always looking for people that travel from the US to the place where the material is required. So for example, it's what we call ambassadors. For example, if Veronica knows one person that is traveling uh, to Mexico during those days, then that might be a way to get them the materials. She could get in touch with Daniela as soon as possible so we can request the materials. However, we can also, we are also requesting people to register their activities in the map to, to consider that this is a registered activity that is going to take place. So, once we approve the activity as being an activity with the theme of the year, then we also need the um, information like the number of people that you're expecting um, that will participate in the activity so we can know how much material we are going to send you. And also considering the address of the person in the US that is going to get the material so that person can take the material to the destination, which in this case, we're talking about Mexico. That would be the way that we have so far to, to bring the materials. We require an ambassador so they are able to distribute the materials. Okay, let's see. Erika says, excellent presentation. Thank you, Erika. Greetings and hugs from your friends of Quetzalí, Nicaragua. We will get in touch soon to see what can be done about the materials. Thank you, Erika. She's another educator that is joining from Nicaragua. And they always have activities throughout the year. Like we mentioned at first, the official dates are May and October. However, you can do activities throughout the year. And this is something that Quetzalí has stood out for because they do activities throughout the year. Okay, so when the DS asks, are there materials that can be sent via email? Yes, yes, that is possible. However, we already shared the links. 
So there you can select exactly which material is the one that you want to download. There is a platform called Trello where you can easily see the materials available and there you can decide what you want to use because we have a, a big variety of materials that you can use. So the information is there. Wendy, we just posted the links in the chat again, and there you can decide which materials you want to use. So Astrid says she would also like to have access to the material. She's a teacher and she has a group of bird watching with kids. So Astrid, you can go to this link that is in the chat right now, or you can also send an email to one of the coordinators, depending where you are. And also, if it's in the Central American region, is with me, Leticia Andino. If you're in the Caribbean, get in touch with Laura Babulel. And in South America, with Miguel Mata in the U.S. with Catherine Rubiano. Okay, so Astrid is in Colombia. So Astrid, you should get in touch with Miguel Mata. So you can get in touch directly. And he can help you with any question that you have. Okay, so we're going to wait a little bit to see if anybody else has a question or a comment. We are here for you. Also, remember that this session and the session before this one are going to be uploaded on YouTube. There's already, the first session is already uploaded in YouTube where we discuss the conservation theme for this year. Let me see if we can post the link to the YouTube session again. And later today, the link to this session is going to be available as well. And there you're going to be able to see information about environment of the Americas. So you can receive the newsletter. And in the chat, you can now find the link to the, the previous session. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. So if there are no more questions or comment, we are going to close the session and we want to thank you for attending and we are very excited to, to see the different activities that are going to take place in the different regions. We know that sometimes can be it can be difficult because of COVID. However, little by little, we're always we're adapting to these safety measures. Remember that you can always have online activities. And I don't know if Laura wants to add anything else. Um, I just want to say thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And um, please uh, send us your photos and um, from all your activities that you are um, going to uh, host this year. So we're really looking um, forward and we're excited to see um, everyone celebrating World Migratory Bird Day. So please share with us. Thank you. Sí, muchas gracias.
Thank you.